Hi and welcome to my second video on scales. In this video I would like to address one of the most important aspects of left hand violin technique, the so-called frame between first and fourth finger. Basically, very often it is practiced by practicing octaves, for example, first finger A on the G string and fourth finger A on the D string. You have a frame between first and fourth finger that way, and it is definitely helpful to practice octaves, no doubt about that. But far more common in literature is the other way around, where you have your first finger on the highest string and the fourth finger on the lowest string. That will be, for example, first finger on the E on the D string and fourth finger on the D on the G string. This frame is far more common, not at once as a double stop, but after each other. So, for example, if you're doing a slurred scale, for the slur to be nice and legato, the string crossing has to be such that your fourth finger is already in place before the bow hits the lower string. Otherwise, it won't be legato. If it comes late, you'll have, you'll have a jerk. And you might also not hit it properly. You might not hit it in tune. So, to practice, this is extremely helpful also to play it fast and for a good legato. The other reason why this frame between first and fourth finger is so very essential and important is because that stabilizes your hand position in all positions. We're going to work at first position today. I'll move up to the higher positions later on. And also, it stabilizes the intonation, and then regardless of where your second and third finger is, if your frame between first and fourth finger is stable, your intonation will be a lot more stable. So that's what we're going to work on today. We're going to work at the same scale as I explained in the video scales one, but this time we're going to concentrate on the double stop between fourth and first finger. So we will start with the same. finger on the E string I'll show you again you go if you can put a bit of vibrato on it and then you continue Keep your fourth finger down on the D string. Keep your fourth finger down on the A string. And then finish the scale. The way back is basically the same thing. down and add the fourth finger and then continue with the open E string and fourth finger keep your first finger down add the fourth finger on the D string On the, D, on the G string, here we are. So that's basically the scale, and I would recommend to spend most time practicing when you go up. with open 
of the D string and then you add the first finger on the D string to the fourth finger on the G string so that you practice that and practice the same thing one string higher that's third finger on the D string with the open G string fourth finger on the D string with open A string and then you add the first finger on the A string and then you practice the same thing a string higher third finger on the A string with open D string fourth finger on the A string with open E string and you add the first finger on the E string and backwards the same thing you have the first finger with the, on the E string with the open A string leave the first finger in place and add the fourth finger E on the A string Same as string lower. First finger B on the A string with open D string. Keep the first finger down and add the fourth finger A on the D string. And the same thing one string lower. First finger E on the D string with open G string. Keep the first finger down and add the fourth finger D on the G string. just explained is difficult so if you find this difficult yes it is it's very important for violin technique but it, it truly is not easy really so important is to have patience and to practice it practice it slowly you have to practice what you can't do it's no point in practicing what you can do you have to practice what you can't do and this is such an important aspect that just by practicing it your whole left hand technique will improve because your hand position will be more stable. You're strengthening the hand, you're improving the hand position, you're training your ear because you're practicing double stops all the time and make sure of course to listen intently and to correct, stay on each note until it's in tune. I say that in every video, but that's just the way it is and have plenty of patience. Very, very typical for Ruggiero Ricci's technique and very, very typical for actually studying with Ruggiero Ricci was that he would give me something which was unbelievably excruciatingly difficult where I thought there's no chance that I would ever manage to do it. And I'd slowly, patiently start working at it. Sometimes I've become very frustrated because it was hard and I'd just keep working at it and working at it because he never let me off the hook. And I noticed quite soon that just by practicing it, my violin technique just improved even before I'd actually mastered it just by practicing it and that's very typical for Ricci's technique just by doing the exercises by practicing it if you practice with a good sound and if you correct your intonation just by practicing it your violin technique will improve you don't have to be able to do this perfectly and you don't have to be able to do this fast but work at it it's very important now I'd like to show you a G major arpeggio in double stops
Then you play open D string and third finger D on the A string. Leave the third finger down on the A string and add the second finger G on the E string. Leave the third finger down on the A string and add the fourth finger B on the E string. Then you play the D third finger on the A string with the G second finger on the E string again. Leave the third finger down on the A string and play that third finger D on the A string with the open D string. Then you play first finger B on the A string with the open D string. Leave the first finger down on the A string and add the third finger G on the D string. Leave the third finger G on the D string down and play it with the open G string as an octave. Leave the third finger G on the D string down and add the fourth finger D on the G string. Then play that fourth finger D on the G string with the open D string. Then second finger B on the G string. And the two open strings again. It's very helpful to also practice this arpeggio because again you're strengthening your hand, you're stabilizing your hand position and you're working at intonation. Again, stay on each note until it's in tune. Use multiple bows. It doesn't matter how long it takes because the most thing that you're practicing and also the most important thing that you're practicing is to hear and to correct. Hope you enjoy this.